This episode opens up with Yin inside her home, having breakfast and her mom comes in to meet her, complaining about the shortage of staff for the day. She then volunteers to carry out the delivery for the orders placed in the restaurant. Her mom is grateful for this but reminds Yi that she has orchestra rehearsals and Yi replies that it is her duty as the daughter of the family. Her grandma comes in after and informs her that it is cabbage day, instructing Yi to purchase some cabbage from the cabbage man. Later in the day, Yi is in the house and notices her slippers moving across the room, so she goes over to them. She carefully picks it up and sees one of Morty's babies inside her slipper. He has no idea how the baby got into her footwear, but she already begins thinking of how to return it to its mother. She informs Jin and Peng about this and they derive a name for the baby, calling her Mini Morty. He puts Mini Morty in the care of her friends as she has a busy schedule to clear in the restaurant and leaves. Jin and Peng take the baby into the lab and conduct experiments on her as they try to find out what type of animal she is and, with it, figure out her habitat. Minnie Morty is very restless, and she runs around the rooftop with Jin's backpack, making them want to return her to her mom so badly. Peng then notices that Minnie Morty isn't just restless, but she's trying to play with them, so he starts playing with the creature. Outside the restaurant, he stacks orders on the bike, preparing to deliver them, when a ball flies off the roof and scatters the packages. She grabs the ball and heads to the rooftop, where Jin tells her that it was Peng who was playing ball with Minnie Morty. Peng also reveals to you that Jin has been carrying experiments on the baby, and this shocks her. He then decides that the baby shouldn't be with them, so she takes it out with her for her delivery, and this makes Everest jealous. He places Minnie Morty in her backpack and drives along the town to deliver dumplings to the customers. Unknown to you, the baby takes bites from several orders, and she delivers already eaten food to the customers. She delivers to the last customer and realizes that Minnie Morty entered the package, so he grabs it away from the customer. She returns to the lab on the rooftop, complaining to Jin and Peng about Minnie Morty. Her mom calls a few moments later, informing her that the customers complained about their service. He implores her friends to keep on investigating how to send the little creature back as she heads out to get the cabbages her grandmother asked her to purchase. As she heads out, Everest tries to follow her, but she refuses, telling him that she's too busy for him and hands the baby to him to stay with. He returns from purchasing the cabbages and sees Everest eating food inside the storage room. She is surprised to see him and asks why he is there. Everest gestures to her that he didn't like staying with Minnie Morty. He then advises him to be more accommodating to the little creature, and she also tries to stop her grandma from entering the storage room. She successfully gets him away from the room and rushes for her violin practice, but arrives very late towards the end. He returns to the restaurant feeling extremely burnt out as she sits on the floor. Her mother comes up to her and advises her about the perks of having too much to do. He later heads to the rooftop and meets her friends, all in a frenzy. Minnie Morty has been wailing for over one hour, and Jin and Peng have unsuccessfully tried to pacify her. He takes the baby from them and plays the violin to her across the rooftop. Minnie Morty gradually stops wailing and soon falls asleep. Seeing this, he follows suit also sleeping off. Jin and Peng arrive where she lays and wake her up, asking for the baby. He is surprised that Minnie Morty has suddenly disappeared and tells her friends that it was with her. Everest then confesses that he poured Morty's saliva on the baby to make her invisible, so they all run into the town searching for the creature. They later find the baby around a trash dump and take it back to the rooftop. He and her friends finally figure out the habitat of the little creature, so they take her out into the woods. There, they see Morty with her other babies and Minnie Morty runs to her mother, who thanks Yi and her friends. Peng advises Yi to take some time to rest, so Everest makes a cloud ball, and she lays in it while her friends play with Morty and her babies. Some days later, Peng walks into the restaurant to meet with his friends and announces that he is participating in basketball tryouts. This conversation mentions his age which is 12 years and Nai gets terrified. She reveals to Peng that every 12 years of a person's life is their big bad year, so she gives him a red string to tie around his wrist for luck. Peng practices with other players, and he doesn't perform well, so he runs straight back home to Nai Nai, mentioning to her that the string didn't help him. Nai then takes a day off from the restaurant and teaches him some superstitious beliefs to avoid bad luck in his big bad year. This involves the choice of fruits, not stepping over ground cracks, and avoiding the number 4. Peng takes note of all this, and it turns out that he puts up an impressive performance during practice. 
He then desires to be team captain and asks Nai Nai for advice. She gives him a zodiac disc, telling him to cut off everyone who isn't compatible with his zodiac sign. Peng's friends, Jin, Yi, and Everest aren't compatible, so he puts an end to their friendship and tells them to keep their distance from him. His friends are confused and try to help him out, but he pushes them away. The day of the game finally arrives, and Peng's friends watch him play through a recording made by the little sugar creatures. He plays badly, as the superstitious rules which he follows hinder him from performing well. The game ends, and he doesn't make the list for the team, and he is sad. Yi, Jin, and Everest arrive and tell him to allow them to help him. He does, so they put him through practice that makes him overcome his superstitious fears, and he's happy and grateful. The next day, he goes out to support his former team during their game and luckily gets back his slot and takes his team to victory. The coach then notifies him that he has been added to the team, his friends congratulate him, and they all leave the court. Unknown to them, at the top of the skyscraper, a huge creature flies in and carries away the magical bird. Some days later, he has a dream about a magical creature calling for her help, so the next morning, she and her friends head towards the spot she saw in her dream. She plays her magical violin and soon, a toad hops out from behind the corner so they take it back home. Beneath them, in the sewers, the magical fish is captured by the same creature which captured the bird. At Eddie's family's restaurant, her mom expects a well-known reporter and this visit would make or mar their restaurant. He volunteers to be a worker and her mother accepts. On the rooftop, they find out that the toad has the power of granting wishes. And although he instructed them against it, Jin and Peng make numerous wishes for the animal. The reporter comes into the restaurant and he works with her mother to provide the best services for him. Jin meets he and shows her the things which the toad gave to him. But she doesn't approve of them. Later, he gets tempted and joins them to make wishes so she could be able to help her mother in the restaurant. Everest also makes a wish to be turned into an old woman, so he would visit the restaurant and help out. He realizes that Everest isn't on the rooftop, so she goes out to search for him and recognizes the old lady as him. At the end of the day, the toad becomes weak and can't grant any more wishes. He and her friends feel bad about their selfishness, she plays the violin to help the animal and the toad gets strengthened and takes its wishes back. She also grants the animal's wish with her magic and it disappears. He runs back to the restaurant and sees that the reporter is satisfied with their service, and she is happy. It is the new year and the time for a popular festival in the town. Peng is excited about it because he and his friends have a list of things they do together yearly. He goes to Yi and informs her about the plans for their friend group regarding the festival, but she excuses herself, telling him that she would be performing at the festival. Peng heads over to Jin, who also mentions to him that he'll be busy. Now Peng is sad that he has to go alone, but Everest volunteers to go with him. After some thought, he agrees, and they head into the town to have some fun. He intends to play the same song her father played when he was her age, so she goes to the temple to ask him. At the temple, a wind picks up a particular script, and she accepts that it is her father's choice, so she heads back home. In the town, his violin strings get broken by a little boy, so she frantically looks for Everest to fix it. She doesn't see him on the rooftop and calls Peng, who hurriedly looks for Everest to return him to the roof. Yi and Jin head to the skyscraper to get the bird to help them find Everest, but realize that the bird isn't there. As they wonder what happened, they see a gigantic creature carrying Everest and Peng away from the rooftop. They arrive at the rooftop and he remembers a story her grandmother told her about a ferocious creature named Nyan. This creature is known for abducting children and animals every new year. Jin, on the other hand, uses the system to track the movements of Everest and Peng and reveals to Yi that they would need a vehicle. They prepare to leave, and Nai Nai hands them dumplings for Nyan, making Yi and Jin wonder how much she knows about their magic secrets. Mr. Burnish arrives with his car and they all head out to find their friends using the tracking device. In the woods, their car gets stuck in the mud and after a while, Yi provides an idea to bring them out of the mud. They see Nyan's footprints on the ground, so they follow them. At Nyan's dungeon, Peng and Everest wake up and see the other magical creatures bring are held captive. He looks around and sees bones of dead animals and this terrified him. In the forest, he and the team arrive at the last footprints of Nyan and they see nothing around. So, one of the little creatures gestures to you that its siblings dropped a trail of sugar along the way, and they all follow the trail. At the dungeon, Nyan takes Everest away from the rest, so Peng decides to plan to escape the dungeon and save Everest. Yi, Jin, and Mr. Burnish finally arrive at the mouth of Nyan's dungeon, and they begin calling out to Everest and Peng. 
Inside, Nyan is with Everest, and they hear the calls, so they come outside together. He is a bit scared, so she plays her violin, and she finds out that Nyan feels lonely, so he took the creatures to keep him company. Pang and the other creatures escape, destroying Nyan's home in the process, and this gets the monster furious. Seeing this, he and her friends run away with the creatures towards the town Nyan arrives in the town and a fierce fight breaks out. The creature attacks Yi, her friends, and the magical creatures while they fight back, defending themselves in the middle of the town. Yi's mother and grandma arrive at the scene and angrily threaten Nyan to stay away from their daughter. The team works together to fight off the monster, but it proves too strong for them. So, Yi draws out her violin with the script her father chose, and she starts playing. Soon, a huge magical butterfly gently envelopes Nyan and Yi sees her father's apparition, which looks proud of her. The apparition disappears and Nyan gives Yi a warm embrace, and he is no longer violent. Soon, the villagers appear and give her a resounding applause, celebrating her and also thanking her for saving the town. Although her secret has been revealed, Yi, her friends, and family are all happy that they can help the village and also the magical creature. This is where the movie ends. Thanks for watching. If you love this video, please leave like and subscribe.